By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an X-Points final. This is finals number 39. And how does that work? What do I mean with the number 39? Well, they have monthly tournaments online. And at the end, they always have a final. So this is version number 39, or edition, I should say, number 39. Um, and it is X-Points. In case you forgot, X-Points is played according to the Atlantic rule set, meaning Fallen Empire is allowed and Mana Burn is real and we have one strip. Um, and furthermore, there's also a list with cards that have points allocated to them. You can see that right here. And when you're building your deck, you cannot spend more than 10 points on cards with points on them. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind when you're constructing your deck. Now today, uh, in the finals today, we have Johannes, he's on the left. He's playing Counter Burn. Oh man, his deck is looking very, very good, it's very strong. And he's taking on Anders, and Anders is playing a red-green aggro. Uh, but also, he has two black cards in there. Try to guess what black cards they are. They're not the cards you expect that they are. Um, but more about that in the deck tech section of this video. Before I start though, I'd first like to mention that as always, you can also choose to first go to the games, check out the deck techs later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below and click on the timestamp MTG games. That'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you will also find the link to my Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash timmytalks. And there you can find out how you can become a patron of the show and support the channel financially. And it is thanks to my patrons that I can still do this. So if you're enjoying the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. It already starts for $1 a month. And for that dollar, you'll get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and you can participate in all the online events that I organize. Okay, now that you're fully informed and hopefully excited about my Patreon program, uh, we're gonna start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the player on the left, and that is Johannes. Let's take a look at this counter burn deck. And here we see the counter burn deck of Johannes. Now I'm really liking this deck photo. It's looking very neat, very organized, and I mean, look at those beautiful power pieces. Time Walk, Ancestral Recall there. And uh, yeah, this is just strong, right? Counter burn, what does it want to do? It wants to play creatures quickly. Flying man, iron claw orc, surrender Ifrit, the perfect curve, right? One drop, two drop, three drop, get them out. Then you also have a lot of burn to uh, hurt your opponent. Lightning bolts, chain lightning, psionic blast. So it's just, it's a super aggressive deck. And then of course, with counter spells, you can kind of uh, counter like the key cards of your opponent, making sure that you stay ahead or of course pr uh, protect maybe some creatures of yourself so you can continue attacking. Then he has that one single fireball as a finisher. It's just looking like a very lean deck. Um, I'm not sure what's behind the Jalem Tome, maybe a second Jalem Tome, I cannot, uh, I don't know, it looks like it. If that's the case, that's very interesting because you don't see a lot of uh, counter burn decks playing the Jalem Tome. The Jalem Tome is also referred to as the Little Book. Uh, it's three to cast, two and tap, and then you draw a card and then you immediately discard a card. So you draw a card and then you got to discard a card. Um, so it's some card selection. I can imagine with this deck, because you don't need a lot of mana, that you can have the, the danger of getting mana flooded. And then of course Jalem Tome gives you a pretty effective way of cycling through those lands, right? You can just uh, discard your land and draw a new card in return. Um, so that's quite nice. So I can see Jalem to uh, Tome here working, but to me that's kind of the card that stands out here because it's a card I don't often see in the uh, counter burn strategy. So I'm looking forward to see how that's going to work out here in the finals. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Anders. So this is red green, look at it. We've got classics like Curd Apes, Urnum Jins, Giant Groves, only one Berserk. So that's quite modest. In this strategy, maybe I would have expected more Berserks. He is also playing Channel, not Channel Fireball, but Channel Disintegrate in this case. So that's something to look out for, right? Maybe he can have an early finisher with Channel. Uh, in case you don't know what Channel Fireball is, Channel is a sorcery for two green, uh, which allows you that uh, for the duration of the turn, you can use your life for mana. So if you're on 20 life, you can generate 19 mana and then you're still on one life. And then of course, uh, Fireball, in this case Disintegrate, is one red and X, and X is the amount of damage that you can deal to any target. So uh, if you, if you let's say, are on 20 and your opponent is on 15 and you've got Channel Fireball, you can play your channel, uh, pay 15 lives for 15 mana or 16 life for 16 ma uh, mana, and then you can play out your Fireball for 15, or in this case, your Disintegrate for 15 and kill your opponent. So Channel Fireball is one of the first kind of combos 
uh, in old school, it is, it is very well known. And of course, channel is restricted. So you always need some luck to pull it off, but in aggressive decks, it can be quite good. Um, a nice thing here in this matchup though, is if uh, Anders has a moment where you can do channel fireball, it's very risky because Johannes is playing with a lot of direct damage, including uh, for example, a lightning bolt. So if he pays 15 life and then wants to cast a fireball, cast a fireball for let's say that, fi that uh, uh, 19, let's say he's on 20, his opponent's on 19, you play it for 19. Then in response, um, Johannes can uh, play a lightning bolt on the life total of Anders, and then it's a draw, I believe, right? So I, I don't know if you can still follow me. I don't, know if I'm, I don't know if I'm explaining it the right way, but my point is, it is pretty risky. Um, then we also see Suchi's here, and, that, and I'm kind of happy to see Suchi because we are playing Atlantic. So that means Suchi, when it dies, you get four mana. If you don't use that four mana, you get mana burn for four. Now, this is a reason why Suchi doesn't see as much play in, um, in, in, in formats with mana burn, but we do see it here. We see three in total. He's also made it to the final. So meaning it kind of works for him. Of course, um, the, the four mana is really good if you have an outlet. And in this case, he has the Mishra's Factories because you can activate a factory as, as often as you want to. So if you get the four mana from the Suchi, you can pump them in your factory. My personal favorite way of using them is when you have a uh, Jam Day Tome and you can just use them to draw an extra card. Now, obviously, uh, you know, in this deck, a Jam Day Tome wouldn't really fit because it's so aggressive. Um, but yeah, that could be the case. And then we have the two black cards that I mentioned before. We have Derelors. So Derelor is uh, pretty cool. It's a 4-4 four, for four, 4, so it's really good. But all your black cards cost an extra black once it hits the board. So it's kind of ideal to splash um, and uh, and then just keep it keep the black with just the Derelors because all your other black is more expensive to cast. In the sideboard, we see one other black card. That's the card Terror. Um, I think in this matchup, the card may come in actually, may come in handy. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm liking this. I'm liking it like putting one or two cards in there. Uh, it makes your deck uh, more diverse. In the sideboard, by the way, we also see a Tsunami. That could be quite handy in this match as well. And we see red Elemental Blasts. They can be quite good. And for Johannes, we also saw, of course, uh, blue Elemental Blasts. Actually, only one blue Elemental Blast. So that's interesting. Um, so yeah, but it, it, maybe after sideboarding, it could be a completely different, uh, different and interesting uh, game as well. Anyway, uh, this is the deck of Anders. We looked at the deck of Johannes, and that only means one thing. We are ready for finals number 39 of X points. Here we go. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Johannes on the left. He's playing uh, Counterburn. On the right, we have Anders, and he's playing red-green aggro. So Johannes here on the play. It's a little bit annoying seeing his cursor, cursor there, but maybe it'll uh, it'll go. And Anders now taking his turn. Look at that, forest into Lana or Elves. That's what you want to do in life. Six in hand, passing the turn. So kind of the opening that he was uh, hoping for. And then we have Johannes. There is a Volcanic Island, tapping the island directly, Chain Lightning on the Elf, exactly. There the elf goes, but at least, you know, if you're on there, at least it's not in the face. And uh, here we see a Mishra's factory. So both players having a factory now. And that's it though, just a pass. Yeah, this is gonna be an, uh, an interesting matchup, right? Both players having pretty uh, quick decks. And there we see another factory. Okay, so tapping three, are we gonna see a Surrender of Freet? Yep, there's the Surrendips. It's a 3-4 flying creature. And during your upkeep, you take one damage. Card from Arabian Nights. Passing the turn now back to Anders. There is a Taiga. Ooh, and look at that. Attacking here, kind of signaling that he has a Lightning Bolt. Johannes taking the damage. I mean, he could consider taking, well, of course he could have a giant growth as well. There we see the giant growth. I was thinking, of course he could have a giant growth and then you don't want to trade. So here we see the giant growth, by the way, being played out by Anders. Anders kind of realizing his position in the game that he's really the aggressor and um, he should just deal an uh, extra three points of damage here. So that means that Johannes dropped to 15. Then in his upkeep, of course, went to 14. I'm expecting an attack now uh, from Johannes with the uh, Surrender also animating his Mishra's factory, Anders being tapped out, so doesn't have to worry about a bolt or a crumble. There he goes, probably gonna pump it up, deal six points of damage or not. Yes, he is gonna pump it up, so six points of damage for Anders dropping to 14. 
There is a, a volcanic island, number two for Johannes and a pass turn. So yeah, this is this is a tough spot for Anders. Need something big. Okay, there's a Suchi that's big enough that can stop the Mishra's factories. And of course, he has that um, factory of his own. So if Johannes has, for example, a Psionic Blast on the Suchi, Anders can spend those four mana to uh, activate his own factory so he doesn't have to take the mana burn. Johannes, of course, taking a hit from his own Surrender, dropping to 13. It's looking good for him. Of course, he can just fly over the Suchi. Okay, there's a Shatter here on the Suchi. He's going to use the mana into the factory so it doesn't take any mana burn, but he still is going to take a hit for five now. Yep, there Johannes goes. So look at that life total of Anders. It's going fast now. He's on nine. Four cards in hand for him, drawing card number five. Yeah, has to find something. Okay, there's another Suchi. Remember, Johannes has so many answers, you know, Psyblast, Shatters. Could, of course, also consider just playing, if he has a Psionic Blast, to play directly on Anders' life total because he's on 9. Johannes now on 12 after taking another damage from his own Surrendip. Can definitely put him on 6 here by flying over to Suchi with the Surrendip. There he goes. So putting Anders on 6. There's another Volcanic, tapping the Volcanic. Okay, there's a Bolt, gonna drop to three, and another Bolt, end of the road. You kind of know with these decks, you know, four chains, four Bolts, as soon as you're on six and he plays that first Bolt, he's gotta have a second one, or else he wouldn't do it, right? So, <laughs> I'm sure Anders could kind of feel that, like, after that first Bolt, uh-oh, and yeah, that's, uh, it's done, it's done. Game one going to Johannes. Well, actually, it's not done, it's just game one. Uh, now, both players are going to dive into to their uh, sideboards, and we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Johannes. That means that Anders is on the play. And uh, there we go. Lanawer Elves again in turn one for Anders. I wonder if this Lanawer Elves is gonna live or also will be uh, toasted. We will find out. There's red. If a mountain coming into play tapped is not a good sign. And yes, it gets toasted once again. <laughs> Man, those poor Lanawer Elves. Just like Bolt the Bird, but now it's toasting. Toasting the Lanawers, chaining the Lanawers. Anyway, there's the factory by Anders and a pass. No Kurt Ape. A little bit disappointed, Anders. I've seen zero Kurt Ape so far. And the Johannes still having that cursor there, by the way. It is what it is, I guess. We have to live with it. Uh, there's a factory of his own as well, passing the turn. And let's see what Anders can do in his third turn. Looks like he's a little bit in the tank here. Does that mean that he doesn't have a land or doesn't know what land to play out? Yeah, taking the land back now. Looks like he's got some options here. Yeah, really kind of thinking about what to do? So I'm curious. I'm curious what we're going to see. Okay, here's a factory. Animating the factory. Okay, this is a pretty big decision, actually, because when you're animating it, it means, you know, you're taking the risk that maybe Johannes has a, uh, has a bolt. In this case, he doesn't. So he's just going to take two, or at least maybe he does, but doesn't want to play it. It's going to drop to 18, but I think it's pretty, pretty safe to say that he doesn't have a lightning bolt. So Johannes dropping to 18. And now it's his turn. And I'm liking this from Anders because he's keeping the Taiga open so he doesn't give a free attack to Johannes. Because if Johannes wants to attack, he has to take the risk that maybe Anders has a bolt. And okay, there's another factory here for Johannes as well. So both players have two factories. It's really a factory heavy uh, finals here. Tapping four, are we gonna see an Urnum? Yep, there's the Urnum Jin. So a four five creature from Arabian Nights. And during your upkeep, you have to give Forest Walk to a creature of your opponent. But if there are no creatures, then of course you cannot give the Forest Walk. 
This, I believe, is a Chronicles edition. And now it's uh, Johannes' turn. Let's see what he can do. If he can find, for, for example, a blue mana and maybe play a uh, Surrender Befreed. Okay, there's the blue mana. And I mean, this, this Urnum Gin is just big enough to make it really difficult for Johannes. Of course, Johannes could consider uh, next turn if Anders attack, uh, attacks to double block on the Urnum with his two factories, and the factories can pump themselves, so in that way you would only lose one factory. But of course it is risky, because if Anders then has a Giant Grove or a Lightning Bolt, you're going to lose both your factories. And the Urnum will live as well. Okay, look at that, tapping three, so I guess we are going to see a Surrender Befreed here. Or not, going to tap the Mountain as well. Looks like we have a little glitch here. Okay, there he is. He's back. <laughs> there is an Azur Drake. So that's a 2-4 uh, flyer from Legends coming in from the sideboard, I believe. I wonder if he boarded out his Surrendips. So Azur Drake, uh, one blue and three to cast for this 2-4 flyer. And now Anders is animating, and it looks like he's going to swing in with both. Remember, he can pump his factory to a 3-3 three, three so that it doesn't die if Johannes blocks it on the Azur Drake. And of course, for Johannes, it's kind of a risk, right? Because then maybe Anders has a Giant Grove, maybe Anders has a Bolt. Who knows? And look at that, he's not even blocking, just taking the full damage, six points of damage for Johannes. And um, yeah, he's getting under pressure here in the second game. He's on 12 now. There is a strip mine. Is it going... Yep, on the island. That makes sense. I want to say it's going on one of the factories or on something else. He is going to go for the island. And uh, both players now discussing life totals. So Johannes saying I'm on 11 and Anders thinks that he's on 10. Okay, back up to 11. And passing the turn here. So uh, Johannes, exactly. Johannes gets to untap here, draw for turn. Yeah, Johannes really with uh, with the back against uh, against the wall here. Okay, finding another island. Ooh, he's gonna attack here with the Azure Drake. Gonna put Anders on eighteen. Next turn is gonna be quite interesting to see what uh, Anders is going to do. So Anders now untap, upkeep, draw, and remember, Johannes has all his mana open. He's playing with Lightning Bolt, Psionic Blasts, so it's pretty risky for Anders here to attack. On the other hand, Johannes is on 11, right? So maybe you should just swing in. Look at that, animating a factory again. So playing aggressive, and he shoot, I think, in this, uh, in this case. Five cards in hand as well. Playing with Giant Groves and with Lightning Bolt, so has some tricks up his sleeve as well. Let's see what Johannes is going to do. I mean, if he's going to try to double block against the Urnum, it's super risky. I mean, then he risks to lose both of his factories. On the other hand, he's already on 11. Could consider trying to block one. I mean, if he has a Bolt, that would be ideal, because then he can just kill a factory. Okay, there's a Shatter, same thing. So he's going to Shatter one of the factories. The attacking one, of course, it just could pump to three, so that's going to die. and Probably going to take four damage from the Urnum. So then he's going to drop to 7. Yeah, and the thing with Urnum is the fact that Urnum has a toughness of 5, it makes the card so good. It's, it's just it's difficult to get rid of it with just one card. You usually have to uh, use two cards to get rid of an Urnum, unless, of course, you have access to white and you can just play a Swords. But uh, it's pretty tough to deal with the 5 toughness. So it's up to Johannes now. 
I wonder if he's gonna swing in with the Drake. I would I would really consider keeping it on, on a blocking duty at the moment. Because I mean Anders is on 18, and whether he's on 18 or 16 doesn't really matter that much. But Johannes, he's on seven, he's quite low, has to really protect his life total. So it's understandable here that he's really taking his time. And it's difficult because again, Anders is also playing with burn. So could also burn Johannes out now that he's on seven. And Anders playing with, uh, I think two or maybe even three disintegrates, quite a lot of disintegrates in his deck. And Johannes here trying to figure out a way out. And this is what you what you see eh? that with with a player with the back against the wall, kind of knowing I'm going to lose this game, and, and really taking his time to try to find a way out of it try to come up with a solution, try to find a line that maybe isn't even there. And I think he's kind of forced next turn to, to take the risk. And look at that, he is attacking with the Ezra Drake. That surprises me, to be honest. Passing the turn. And now if you're Johannes, you could even consider attacking with the factory as well, just putting optimal pressure on your opponent. Of course, it depends on what he has in hand. And I mean, can you imagine if either player would play with Glass of Urza? What a difference that would make. What a huge advantage you would have. Here's the attack with the uh, Urnum Jin. Really curious to see what Johannes is going to do. I think in an ideal situation, he would have a bolt here and he could just put one um, Mishra's Factory in front and then play a bolt and then kill the uh, Urnum that way. because it's super risky to try to, to uh, double block here. So there we see him animating the factory. So he can, he can block it and then the factory can pump itself to 3-3. Three, three. Then he can use the other factory to make it a 4-4, four, four. but that's not enough because this Urnum has of course five toughness. And that is, that is the problem here for Johannes. So I wonder if he's thinking about double blocking. Yeah, he's going to go for the double block. Kind of forced here, I guess. So he's going to double block. Probably they're going to tap themselves so that uh, there is six damage coming towards the Urnum. But here we see a response. Yeah, there's the lightning bolt. And this is, of course, the, the situation that Johannes feared. Because that means that the other one is going to die as well. So uh, Johannes here probably going to lose both Mishra's factories, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, going to pump it to a 3-3, but it's not going to change much. And maybe both players are now discussing when the lightning bolt got played. So you need to play it before damage is, uh, is coming through. And I'm sure Anders did that so that the Urnum doesn't uh, take two damage from the other factory as well. And now we're in Anders second main, I guess. Okay, he's gonna tap two green. What are we gonna see? Does he want to do something there with the uh, factory? I mean, he's already attacked, right? So this is, must be a second main. He's going to tap the factory. 
Okay, so he's got three mana in the pool, two green, one colorless. He's gonna untap. Okay, untap again, tap a green. Okay, kind of unclear here what he wants to do. I'm curious now. I mean, two green could mean a channel. Does he have channel disintegrate? That would work in this case because he's got 16 and uh, Johannes only has seven life left. So that would be uh, an easy win. Tapping two. Yep, there's the channel. Okay, kind of expecting to see a disintegrate here. Oh, he's going to do a hurricane. Ah, that's why. So this is interesting. So he's going to take six life. Do a hurricane for six. Oh, he's going he's gonna to use six from the chain. He's going to do it for seven. So then he will be on zero. And then, of course, he's going to take seven. He'll end up on three, actually. If Johannes would have had a lightning bolt, then it would have been uh, interesting. Anyway, uh, game number two here, going to Anders. And that means it's 1-1. One, one, and we're going to go to an all decisive game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. And Johannes on the play, of course, after losing that second game, starting with a mountain and a pass. Oh, there's Kurt Ape. Tiger into Kurt Ape. Classic moves. Nice, Anders. And uh, there is a quick lightning bolt, though. Man, all those creatures get toasted. First, Alana were elves, now the Kurt Apes. If you're the first creature coming out in this game, it's really bad news. Johannes here playing an island. And passing the turn. There is a forest. And another Kurt Ape. Okay, Kurt Ape number two. So it's a 2-3, of course, because the Anders has forests. Let's see. Oh, Chain Lightning. More roasting, uh, roasting monkeys. Roasted monkeys, I should say. There is another forest for Anders. Tapping two green. What are we going to see? Oh, Regrove getting back the monkey. The monkey's back. Oh, this is funny. Are we going to see another bolt or chain? So three cards in hand now for Anders. And uh, four cards in hand. Look at that. Another chain. Oh, man. It's just not meant to be. Okay, there's a second blue. Now Johannes has counter uh, magic up as well. Let's see if Anders is going to try to play through it or if he's just going to pass. Okay, he's going to try to play through it, playing an Urn of Jinn. Are we going to see a counter spell here by Johannes? No, we're not. And here you can see, sometimes it's good to just go for it. Let your opponent have it. In this case, he didn't have it. Tough love. Now you've got an Urn to deal with. Or maybe he had a Control Magic. That's, of course, uh, <clears throat> another thing that can happen. So Control Magic by Johannes. This could be pretty decisive. Also because Anders is playing red-green. Uh, you know, it's, it's really tough for a red-green deck to get rid of uh, enchantments. Not quite sure if he has a Tranquility in there. Oh, this works, of course, from the sideboard. Has to tap a red, though. Has to tap the Taiga. Exactly. Red Elemental Blast. This is perfect for Anders. Exactly what he needs. And also, Johannes, of course, having no uh, counter magic up, couldn't play a blue Elemental Blast or a counter spell himself because had to tap out for that control magic. So there's another land here, a Volcanic Island for Johannes. Only two cards for him in hand, and also two cards for Anders. Okay, he's going to play something out. Tapping three. Okay, tapping four. Another Control Magic, perhaps. No, an Azur Drake. And then it's a turn uh, for Anders. And of course, Anders is going to give uh, Forest Walk to the Azur Drake during the upkeep. But... Um, that doesn't matter much. There's a City of Brass. Tapping four. Oh, Tsunami coming in from the sideboard. This is devastating for Johannes. Tsunami washing away all the islands. Oh, man. As a blue mage, Johannes, I feel, I feel this with you, man. This is tough. And now he's in a really difficult spot. Dropping to 16. Losing three lands there to the Tsunami. Oh, oh my, 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 my. This is really difficult. Can he come back from this? There's the attack first. Anders dropping to 18. Passing the turn, yeah. It's really tough. I think I would have maybe even, even considered attacking with the factory, just going all in. Oh, there's a strip mine from the top, making matters even worse. Yeah, gonna go here for the uh, mountain. 
Wow, that tsunami was such a killer. Of course, I read Elemental Blast already was great for Anders to answer that control magic, but that tsunami, wow, that was devastating for Johannes' game plan. Yeah, finding uh, another factory here. I mean, he could now, yeah, keep Azure Drake, and then he can trade. Ooh, he is attacking. Does that mean that he has a Lightning Bolt or a Giant Grove? I'm, I'm expecting a double block here by Johannes. I mean, he kind of has to, so he can animate the factory, then do factory Azure Drake. Factory can pump itself, so you deal five damage. And I'm expecting here a Giant Grove or a Bolt. Oh, okay, yeah. Red Elemental Blast on the Azure Drake. That means Johannes is going to lose both creatures. There's a lot of our elves. His hand's empty, but I mean, it's looking so good for Anders here. Look at that board of Johannes. Only one Mishra's factory. He just needs to start drawing lands very quickly. Okay, that's a start. That's a mountain. Now he's on 12, so he's got about three more turns. He's not dead yet. And of course, he could jump one turn as well. So two cards left in hand, passing the turn. There's the card for Under swinging in for four. Probably going to drop to eight here, exactly. Johannes needs another land. Three cards in hand. Looks like he didn't find a land here. Oh, he did. Okay, another mountain. I guess an island would have been better, but finding a mountain here. And of course, if you're on there, just keep attacking, right? Just uh, exactly turn it sideways, get in there. Four life now for Johannes, so he's going to be forced to chump block next turn unless he can cast a creature or something. There we see an Elves of Deep Shadow, 1-1, one, one, tap for one black, take a damage. Nicknamed Alanis Morissette. Johannes now, he's on four, needs to do it. Has to happen. Three cards in hand. Oh, this is looking so good for Anders. But remember, Johannes could still chump with his factory. Exactly, go all in, because you know that Johannes has to block the Urnum. Blocking the Urnum, taking two, dropping to two. Does he have a giant grove or something? And now we see a moment, Anders taking a moment, but I think it's pretty much cut and dry, right? Johannes has to block the Urnum. And then Johannes takes two. And if Anders has a giant grove or a bolt, he takes the game right now. And the match. Okay, two life here for Johannes. Two cards in hand. Passing the turn. Last turn for Johannes. Has to find something. What can he do? Finals number 39. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. That's not enough. He can't even activate it. That's it. And that is the win. Anders winning here the X Points Finals with his red and green aggro deck. Congratulations, uh, Anders. Here we see his winning deck. And I think, Johannes, that tsunami was just, that was just, that was deadly. That was absolutely, absolutely devastating. That was the, uh, the MVP of game three winning here the finals for Anders again. Congratulations, Anders. And um, yeah, wow, what a match. Thank you guys uh, for watching. And before you go, I'd like to ask you to do uh, one more thing, actually three things that is liking this video, commenting on this video and sharing it on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel uh, move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also become a patron of the show. Check out Patreon dot com slash timmy talks for all the information and if you become a patron at the two dollar level your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor what shall we do with the drunken sailor
Just think it's a somber cuisine. 